Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today's book is Greek Fire, Poison Arrows and Scorpion Bombs by Adrienne Mayer. And I'm going to start by saying, great book, really interesting. So I got this book actually off the back of a TV show that uh, we had to build a Greek fire boat for. It's called Beat the Ancestors. Now, Greek fire is a it's not mythological, but it's certainly an unknown recipe. We know some of the things that it did. Some of the uh, claims might have been overblown and inflated. Some maybe not. But what we do know for a fact is that um, in the Byzantine Empire, sort of around about the middle, 7th, 8th century, something like that, and the Arabic nations as well, they had Greek fireboats. Now, Greek fire was flamethrowers. So, I mean, you could use it in all sorts of things, but they had flamethrower boats, which is just, it's a mind-blowing thing, because if you imagine a Hollywood film now, where uh, some galley rowed out from the, the walls of, of Byzantium with some suitably attired men, and they just opened up the flamethrowers onto somebody else, 99.9% .9 of the population in the world would just go, that is absolute cack. Rubbish, didn't happen. It did happen. It absolutely did happen. And this book talks about it but it talks about a lot of other things as well. So it goes back, um, she's done a great job actually, researching, going back every manuscript, every bit of information that she can find, way back. So around about 1700 BC, I think the book starts, something like that. Works its way through uh, into the early medieval times. So let's say about the 1200s. Now, in the ancient world, well, you've got three things going on. You've got Greek fire, poison arrows and scorpion bombs. Now, Clearly, because it is such a great name for a book, she chose that because it is such a great name for the book. But it deals with lots of other things. So it deals with um, not later medieval fire weapons, but, but Greek fire. So they had a lot of pots of incendiary that they would mix up and throw around and pour around and oil and naphtha based stuff. They had an awful lot of small grenades, so literally sort of fist sized hollow spheres. Uh, or, or ceramic vessels, which would be then lit and charged with various inflammable stuff. So they had a lot of that going on as well. The Romans used to use fire arrows, but more of a sort of a smouldering type. They weren't quite as burning. They didn't use oxidizers as far as we know. Poison arrows. Well, poison arrows, the nicest way to put that really is that that is chemical warfare. And not only did they use chemical warfare in the sense of arrows, but they would also use pots of lime and other chemicals and all sorts of things. So again, the concept of chemical weapons in warfare is simply not a new thing. Chemical weapons in warfare go way back, basically to the dawn of time. And then, of course, scorpion bombs. Well, in modern terms, that would be uh, biological. Obviously, they couldn't really harness um, pathogens in the way that we know that we can now. Although, again, they used to... Um, poison wells by throwing animals down it, she deals with that. Uh, they would throw uh, rotting corpses and things to try and introduce disease into cities, we use some trebuchets and things, she deals with that. But also the rather fabulous scorpion bombs. I can't remember who it was, um, I can't pretend that I do, but basically ceramic vessels full of scorpions, beehives, snakes, not obviously mixed together because that wouldn't work, but something that you don't want inside your fortification and they'd throw them over and it talks about that as well so she does go into the recipes now some of the words uh obviously are just a lot and translations are just lost time other ones she's made good guesses at or the best educated guesses she can other ones you absolutely know so these recipes are rarely complete but they give you a really good indication of what's going on one of the things that particularly interests me is a lot of the recipes list uh, red metal. Now, she doesn't know in this, uh, I actually wrote to her after I read the book, but um, one of the metals that I know as red metal is red, or, uh, red lead, which is, I think it's lead four oxide. Now that was a standard oxidizer for fireworks. Not now because it's so incredibly toxic, but back in the day. So it could be that they were using red lead as one of the oxidizers in their recipes. I don't know, I don't suppose we'll ever know really. But anyway, Greek fire, poison arrows and scorpion bombs, if nothing else, 
you just need to buy that so it sits on your bookshelf and people can read the title because it's so very, very cool. But other than that, if you're interested in ancient warfare and slightly obscure corners of it, this is just a fantastic book. So I would really thoroughly recommend it. And like all of these little chats that I'm giving about the books, there is um, a listing about it in the notes. Go have a look. Go buy the book. See you for another one.